before I go over the bones of the hand, I just want to mention an articulation point that you should be familiar with. So do you remember the U for ulna? And you'll remember the round radius. Okay, these are the bones of our forearm, our radius and our ulna. And when I put them together like this, we're looking at the proximal end. This is by our elbow. And over here we have the distal end. This is the end of our forearm that reaches our wrist. When I hold the hand up to this, you'll notice that on the thumb side, the thumb side, we articulate with the radius. And on the pinky side of our hand, we articulate with the ulna. So radius, ulna, Radius articulates with the thumb side of our hand. The ulna articulates with the pinky side of our hand. Just so you know. Okay, so what do we have here? We're looking at the hand, and we're actually looking at the hand and the wrist. So what do I mean by that? If I put, if I put this model on my own hand, right? you'll notice that these are actually the bones of the wrist, okay? When I up, down, up, down, up, down at my wrist here, okay? It's actually flexion, extension, flexion, extension at the wrist. That's these bones gliding past one another here. Then we get to the bones of the hand. Then we get to the bones of the fingers, right? So the entire thing are not just your fingers, it's bones of the hand and bones of the fingers. And the way that we actually describe this are our carpals, bones of the wrist, from the word carpus, meaning wrist. The metacarpals, these are the bones of our hand. And the phalanges, these are our fingers, oftentimes referred to as the digits. So carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. These are phalanges of the thumb right here. So let me go over the way that this works. I'm actually going to start not with the carpals, but with the metacarpals. It's actually pretty easy to follow. So here we have metacarpal number one, metacarpal number two, metacarpal three, four, and five. Metacarpal one leads into our thumb. Metacarpal two leads into our pointer finger. Metacarpal three is going to lead into the middle finger, metacarpal four into our ring finger, and then metacarpal five into our pinky. So again, metacarpal one, two, three, four, five. When we get to the phalanges, you'll notice the phalanges have several bones to them. So here you'll see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, etc. That same one, two, three that I'm describing here is the same one, two, three you see when you bend your finger. One, two, three. One, two, three. And so on and so forth. What do you notice about your thumb, though? Your thumb, which is called digit number one, really just has a one, two. And that's proximal distal. The others, it's proximal middle distal proximal, middle, distal. That's what you see here. Digit number one, your thumb, only has a proximal and a distal phalange. But digit number two, your pointer finger or your index finger, proximal, middle, distal. Digit number three, your middle finger, proximal, middle, distal. Digit number four, proximal, middle, distal. And your pinky, digit number five, proximal, middle, distal. So your phalanges of digits two, three, four, and five have proximal, middle, and distal phalanges. Proximal, middle, distal phalange. But your thumb, okay, this is just proximal, distal. Proximal, distal. So if I pointed to this right here, this would be the proximal phalange of digit number four. This is the middle phalange of digit number three. This is the distal phalange of digit number two. These are our phalanges. If we come all the way 
to our the bones of our wrist, I've always thought of this as, there are eight bones, but I've always thought of this as two rows of four. There's sort of a bottom row when you look at it here, which is actually the more proximal row. And then there's a, a, an upper row, which in anatomical position is the more distal row. But we have one, two, three, four bones here, and then five, six, seven, eight bones here. But here's the way I always thought of them as, and I have a, um, a mnemonic that I use um, to help me remember them. So easy way to do this. So long to pinky, here comes the thumb. So long to pinky, here comes the thumb. When I say so long to pinky, I'm saying S L T P. So long to pinky. Scaphoid, lunate, triangular, pisiform. Scaphoid, lunate, triangular, pisiform. And then you're at the pinky when you say that. So long to pinky. Here comes the thumb. Hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. Here comes the thumb. Hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. And when you say it in this order, so long to pinky, here comes the thumb. It's the bones. Scaphoid, lunate, triangular, pisiform, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. You'll notice that I'm showing you an anterior view, okay? This is the this is the right hand that I'm showing you. Okay, it's not this. This is my left hand now. Okay, don't make this mistake. Now, how do you figure that out? How do you know if you're looking at this hand or this hand? Because I could put both my hands together like this and both my thumbs are pointing the same way. But obviously this cannot be both hands. It's gotta be one or the other. So again, if you look at sort of the natural arc that your hand has at rest, you'll notice there's an anterior and a posterior side. You can sort of see that natural arc. If you don't pick up on that, you can also actually look at the bones of your wrist. This one in particular, hamate. So hamate, if you notice, sort of has this little hooked portion to it right here. If you see that little hooked portion of hamate, you are looking at the anterior side. If I flip this over now, pardon the blue ink spot, you're looking at the posterior side. The, the mnemonic still works. So long to pinky, here comes the thumb. Scaphoid, lunate, triangular, pisiform, hamate, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. But one thing you'll notice about hamate is you do not see that little hooked portion anymore. Okay, this looks like two bones a little bit when you look at it head on here, but that's actually just one bone right there. But you don't see that hooked portion when you're looking at the posterior side. Quick review of the entire bones of this structure. We're actually looking at our wrist, our hand, and our fingers. So bones of the wrist are called the carpal bones. Remember the carpal bones? We have the mnemonic, so long to pinky, here comes the thumb. Scaphoid, lunate, triangular, pisiform, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. When we look at the bones of our hand, we have our metacarpals. Metacarpal one, metacarpal two, metacarpal three, four, and five. Those are the bones that actually sit in our hand itself. And then we have the bones of our digits or our fingers. These are our phalanges. Remember on digit number one, our thumb, we have a proximal and a distal phalange. On digits two, 
three, four, and five. This would be our index finger, our middle finger, our ring finger, and our pinky. We have a proximal, middle, and distal. Proximal, middle, distal, proximal, middle, distal phalanges. What? Is that really your best? Yeah, why? Oh, awful. Wait, I think I have one more. <laughs> 